Hello, be the Ram Global Fellowship family and friends. This is Pastor Coach McKissick, and this is sadly our last installation of a series we've been working on all month on the power of prayer. And today, the title of my lesson for the next few five minutes is Keep On Praying. If you haven't learned anything about the power of prayer in the month of September, I want you to keep on praying. In essence, you can get off right now as long as you know that you're supposed to continue to pray. But I want to go into a little more detail. But if you got to go, if you want to say, I was in Bible study because I tuned in, I clicked in, keep on praying. That's the title of it. My text will come from 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. That's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. But you got to keep on praying. Prayer is not something that you do just when you eat, just when you're going through, or, or just when, you know, you're trying to win the lottery. Prayer is something that you should do on a daily basis. You know, I, I can think about times that I was in trouble. Oh, God, if, if you get me out of this, I will never do it again. Y'all got them promises y'all done made to God when you were praying, when you when you know for real, for real, that you just wanted him to get you out of what you was going through. But you got to keep on praying. Make prayer a part of your daily life. Let's pray, God. Thank you for this opportunity that we're going to have together to learn your word. Thank you for using me as your vessel. God, I just pray that you be with us. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Once again, my text is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. I'm going to read that to you. Let, let me read that to you. And it says, pray continually. Pray continually. There's got to be more than that, Pastor. There is. Let me uh, let me get this text up for you. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. I will put it on the screen. So you can have it as well. And it reads, pray continually. You're like, well, the rest, that's it. Pray continually. If you had to remember one scripture, that's a short one. Jesus wept. That's a two-letter one right there, a two-word one. Pray continually. That's it. That's the text. That's the sermon. That's it. That's the sermon. I, I had to double check myself. I'm like, I thought in my notes that I was missing something. That's the word. Pray continually. First Thessalonians 5.17. Y'all go home. Pray continually. All right? Uh, like, no, no, no. But let me give you more of that. Prayer is a lifestyle. It, it should be a lifestyle. It, like Paul wrote this. And he said, pray continually. Don't just pray at set times during the day. It is good that you pray when you wake up. It is good that you pray before you eat. It is good that you pray before you go to bed. I'm not knocking those prayers. But prayer should be like an everyday situation. I'm praying because I want to have a conversation with God. I'm riding to work. I'm praying. I'm finna go into a meeting. I'm praying. Like first, like Philippians 4 or 6 says, in every situation... By prayer and petition, present your request to God. That was in our early in our uh, in our lessons early in the month. Every situation you need to be praying. You need to pray continually. Like what I'm trying, I'm gonna keep saying that. Pray continuously. Pray continuously. Not just for certain situations. Pray in every situation. Like you, we're learning, my wife and my family, that we gotta go to God about but just about everything. When I was younger, it's like, oh, y'all be doing too much. Hey, you praying? Yeah. Now it's like every decision I make. God, what you think about this? God, how you feel about this? God, I'm thinking about doing this. God, I know I'm wrong, but could you keep me alive? You know, pray continually. Prayer has to be a lifestyle. You got to pray in every situation. And if you're confused, prayer is just a conversation. A conversation with God. First Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares about you. 
Imagine somebody that cares about you and they have all the power in the world and out of the world. Don't you think that's a good, that's somebody that you want to talk to? You want to sit on the couch with his own events and you want to talk to, uh, what's his name? Shannon Sharp. You want to talk to, uh, fix my life. You want to talk to Oprah. Talk to God. It's free. He ain't even charging you. Like, I don't mean to be so blunt with this thing, but pray continually. You got to keep on praying. Like, I want to encourage you that to have a conversation with God, a respectful one, just like you would have with your kids or your parents or your friends. Uh, you know what? I'm about to play this NCAA. I want to have some fun. I'm tired of losing. Give me the wisdom and the discernment to, uh, to make the right plays because I want this game to be fun. I'm tired of getting ran up and down the court, up and down the field. Like just the more you talk, the better you'll learn them. The more you learn them, the better you'll learn yourself. It, I, I know I'm ending on like a happy note because if we did say earlier that you're supposed to pray with Thanksgiving, but I want to make sure that you understand that prayer should not be a sad thing. It should not be a, a duty. Like, oh, I gotta pray. Oh, oh, oh. I'm like, don't come to me like that. I don't want you talking to me if you feel like you forced to talk to me. Oh, let me go talk to my, my husband again. Here you go, go ask for something. Let me talk to the kids. No, 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 no. And God don't want that either. And, and really, let me let me go. That, that's the Bible study, but let me go back. Sorry, it ain't long, but it, 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 it is what it is. First Thessalonians 5 and 7. Pray continuously. Pray continually, okay, for your for the scholars. You gotta pray. First thing I said was prayer should be a lifestyle. My bishop used to say, I know you ain't been praying when I call you up to pray in church. And you sound just like you sounded a year ago. That means you really ain't been praying. Because as you pray more and more, your conversation enhances. Because he pours into you. So you know how to talk to him. So pray. And pray like it's a lifestyle. And then you got to pray in every situation. Not just the bad. Not just the good. Not just because you're hungry. Not just because you're sleepy. Not just because he woke you up. Now, you see what I'm saying? The more you pray, the more it comes a lifestyle. So you pray continuously, continually. You make prayer a lifestyle. And you pray in every situation. And last thing, when you pray, have a conversation. Don't be so deep if you're young and you hear your parents speaking in tongues or cutting a rug and this and that. Yeah, fervent prayer. You can be passionate. And you don't have to cry. You can be passionate and you're not yelling. You can be passionate and you don't know every, you know, Yahweh. You don't know what uh, Jehovah this, Jehovah that is. God, you you, God, you him for me. You are the winner. You, you my MVP. Talk how you talk. And the more he'll, he may just drop a word on you. Makedish. What is Makedish? And then you get to Googling. Oh, that mean this. That mean, I'm telling you. The more you talk, the more you communicate, the better your life will be with Christ. This month, we challenge you to enhance your prayer life. And you know what? One thing that would enhance your prayer life, other than communicating, reading his word. Read your word, read your Bible, and pray. Read your Bible and pray, read your Bible and pray, read your Bible and pray. That's it. God, thank you for this September this month of prayer. Thank you for covering us. Thank you for loving us. God, I pray that if anyone does not know you right now and the pardon of their sins, that they would reach out to you. Yeah, we've been having conversations all September. And I pray they'll reach out to you. And they'll just show you, hey, God, what you want me to do about this? God, I'm a sinner. I believe all that stuff the pastor be saying. I believe the stuff I read in that Bible. I believe that you sent your son from heaven to earth. He sacrificed his life and he rose in three days. And because of that, my sins are covered. If you believe that, then you're saved. 
I ain't mean for that to go off. That's my alarm. One, two, three, let's go. But for real, it's just the timing. That like, that's God's timing right there. One, two, three, let's go. Like if we say, let's go, it's time. You're on the right team. Hey, this is Pastor Coach McKissick of Be The Ram Global Fellowship. And I'm excited that you tuned in. And I want you to share this with somebody else. God loves you and so do I. That's it. That's all I can get. Bye. I'm out.